Okay, for those in attendance, uh, welcome to the quarterly Million Mentors March for Black Children Virtual Web Seminar. Uh, this seminar, we're going to be covering how to get ready for the financial burden of college. And I'll introduce the guest speaker here in a second. Uh, myself, um, I'm the founder of the site, Gus Wright, and uh, our co-founder is Amir Weston. And again, our mission is to normalize goodness and uh, to create a lasting solution to some of the systemic problems that we have uh, within the black community. And so last seminar we discussed uh, everything I wasn't taught, part one, and then, and uh, I spoke on that one. You can visit our site at www.millionmentorsmarch.org slash lectures uh, to watch repeats of that one and also the previous uh, webinars that we've put forward. This seminar we have a uh, guest speaker uh, to grace us this time, uh, Mr. Bobby E. Roberts, Jr., Savannah State University, TRIO Upwards Bounds Director and Adjunct Professor. And uh, without further ado, uh, sir, I'm going to go ahead and turn the floor over to you. I have your first slide queued up, and you just let me know when you want me to transition. Okay. Sounds good. Sounds good. Well, good afternoon, all. Um, as he stated, my name is Bobby Roberts, and I'm with Savannah State University, um, and I am the director of the Upward Bound program here. Um, and basically, my role is to assist first-generation students um, with preparing for college. Um, I understand that they will graduate high school, um, but I'm taking these high school students as early as ninth grade um, and preparing them for through a battery of workshops and seminars and tutorial assistance and academic instruction, all in preparation for college graduation. Um, so I, I do have a, a wealth of knowledge uh, in the area of financial aid. Um, you know, first generation students, that's basically how they're able to go to school um, because, you know, their parents had probably not adequately prepared uh, themselves uh, by saving and things of that nature. So they really are reliant um, on the federal uh, aid process. So qualifying for aid. Um, there is the FAFSA form. Everyone that uh, has interest in federal student aid must fill out the FAFSA form. So that's even if, oh, you have students that, oh, my parents make too much money. Um, I'm not going to be eligible for aid. Uh, yes, you are. You're eligible for what they call student loans. Uh, you may not be eligible for the Pell Grant or um, the other need-based grants that are uh, available via the FAFSA, but if you have an unmet need um, and you did not complete the FAFSA, you will not be eligible for student loans. Everyone is eligible for a student loan, so everyone is eligible for some type of federal aid. So um, I don't want you to leave this conversation thinking that, okay, well, my parents, uh, the EFC, which is the expected family contribution, is X, Y, Z, so I don't get Pell Grant. Okay, that's understood, but you do qualify for loans. Um, and I always try to share with students when they are taking loans, um, loans are a, not a gift. They are what it states. A loan, um, so you have to understand that it's gonna you're gonna pay that back with interest. Um, so it's important that you take out what you need to go to school with. I know a lot of students, uh, definitely first generation students, they they want things that they've never had before. So they take out all this money, um, and then when it's time to graduate or they cease to participate because there is a clause in that uh, information that you're signing that promissory note. Six months after you've graduated or ceased to participate, meaning you stopped going, the federal government wants their money back. So um, when you're filling out the FAFSA form, it's important that you are putting the correct information. Um, I think this year has been a record year for verification. I have never seen this amount of students having to go through the verification process I think in my 13 years of working in higher education, it's specifically with uh, the Upper Bound program, and um, now they have it so sophisticated that they pull the information from the IRS. So there's no manipulating numbers. There's no doing anything that used to kind of happen in the past. You have to make sure you're completing that form correctly because they will find it 
and it will delay your A, which delays you being enrolled, which requires you to pay out of pocket or go through a second party, a third party uh, payment system, which of course is more money. Um, so it's important that students are um, qualifying for aid early. Uh, now they allow uh, the FAFSA to open uh, October 1st for the next year. I think that was a great move. Um, and so what they do is they use, they use the historical information, so they kind of go back two years for your tax return. So you, it's important that families have filed their taxes um, so students can qualify for aid. Your child should not be delayed or denied because you have not uh, filed your taxes. Um, I know there's a, a lot of reasons as to why, and I'm not going to get into that, but when you know your child is going to be reliant on financial aid, it's important that you have done what you can as a parent uh, to ensure that they are eligible for aid. Now, types of aid. There are grants, which are um, monies that do not have to be repaid. Um, of course, there are loans and scholarships. Um, grants are basically there's nothing you have to do. Based on your uh, FAFSA form, whatever information you generate, they do their formulas, and they're going to send you back an award letter from whatever school you're going to, and they're going to say, okay, you've been gifted this grant. Grants are the way to go. Um, they, you know, like I said, there are no uh, money that has to be repaid. You just have to basically be a good student. Um, they have something called um, satisfactory academic uh, progress. So they're going to check um, every so often. They normally do it every 30, 60, 90 hours. So they're going to be looking at your financial aid availability and eligibility um, based on your grades. So students, if you're listening or when you listen, it's important that you're moving towards your degree because if you are not moving towards, you're running out of time, you're running out of resources, they're going to say, hey, you get your senior year, which may be your fifth or, uh, you know, God forbid, sixth year, and you're going to run out of money. They don't pay for classes multiple times. I think you could only pay for a class up to three times the the fourth time, if you're taking that English class again, it's going to be on you. So it's important that you are getting supportive services once you get to these institutions and you're getting in and getting out. Um, higher education is needed. It is, it's a great experience, but it is costly. Um, every student you see is tuition. So when you think about that, if you go to a school that has 40,000 students, every student has paid to go there. So you got to think about how much money is generated based on the volume of students. Um, so grants are the way to go. Like I said, there's nothing you can do about that. It is what it is, but it's based on your um, household size, your um, the money that is generated in your household size, how many people are going to school at the same time, that kind of thing. So um, there's nothing that you can do about that. Now, when it comes to loans, there is the subsidized and the unsubsidized loans. Um, I always tell students to go for the subsidized because sub means help. They're, they're going to basically assist you with attaching the um, the interest on the back end, so you don't have to send no no payment while you're in school. They're just going to attach it to the to the actual loan. So that's better for students because you don't want to get a bill monthly to say, hey, you got to pay thirty dollars for interest towards this, and you forget about it, and then you end up having a an issue with getting loans moving forward. So I always tell students that they do qualify for a subsidized loan, that is the best loan to get um, because the interest is paid on the back end. There's nothing you have to do now. Now, if you do take an unsub um, loan, of course, you have to do something while you're in it, but I think as well you can have that paid on the back end as well, but it's a little different as far as how to calculate it. So. Um, you can leave that loan alone, <laughs> um, I would suggest. But if you need it for your cost of attendance, if you're going to these private institutions um, where they are very, very expensive, you may need to do what you have to do um, if you're trying to go there. But also, too, with uh, I'm trying to get off topic with this piece, but dual enrollment. If you are a junior, if you are, have a sophomore student, they have programs for those high school students that are high achieving 
um, and I don't win through the high school process quickly, they can take classes as a high school student, and they don't have to pay for it. They give you the book. They give they pay for your tuition, and you get high school credit, and you also get college credit. That is the way to go. You know, if you have a student that's about to graduate early, they have nothing else to do, let them stay in school because they need the socialization. You don't want to throw a 60-year-old um, into a college environment because it is definitely different from high school. Um, so if you have that opportunity um, and it doesn't go against your financial aid because you know, normally your state is paying for that, so um, that's another, another opportunity for students to get ahead, and it also saves money because you're not paying for it. Um, so it's a win-win for families. So we talked about uh, grants, loans, and now scholarships. Um, scholarships are the way to go. I know students, uh, they do not want to write essays. They don't want to do anything extra because, oh, I just want to, you know, I'm so overwhelmed. And However, there is so much money that goes unclaimed because students aren't, they're not applying for them. Sometimes they just have to give the money away. So if two people apply, the two people get it automatically because they don't have a pool of candidates to pull from. So I strongly encourage students to write, to write and apply for scholarships. There's so much money. Um, just write at their fingertips. All they have to do is sit down and write an essay. And what you can do is you can have a form essay that, because they always, they always want to know about you. They always throw like a clause to make it a little different. Well, you know, they give you a little statement that you have to write around. But if you have a form response, you can kind of tweak it and then you can make it fit. And all you're doing is revising and submission. Um, you should never have to pay for a scholarship. I know um, there are some agencies out there that, uh, oh, yeah, you can pay for it. Or, we'll, you know, you send us $100 and scholarships are scholarships. You should never have to pay. Now, there are some scholarship organizations where you pay a fee and they'll find stuff for you, but they are, there's a lot of free money out there where you don't need to do that. Now, competitive edge. I always try to tell students uh, when they're in high school as early as ninth grade, start volunteering. Um, if you can create a little program, you, you go into the nursing home passing out lemonade or you, you go young ladies paint the fingernails of um, elderly patients in the nursing home. You are going to the hospital and doing Christmas functions for uh, the kids that can't get out um, and are there for, you know, whatever reason. You have an opportunity to affect change, but you're cataloging these hours because it takes preparation. It takes time to go out, and you're not getting paid for that service. And when it's time to compete for scholarships, now you're a senior. Now you're competitive. You've done, you know, all these activities. You've been the president and the captain and X, Y, Z, but you have 250 hours of peer service. Now your wealth has just grown because they'll say, oh, this student has done all this. The GPA is good. The test scores are great but they found an opportunity to give back in a meaningful way. So um, also, too, there are several uh, big scholarships. Gates Millennium is one. Um, if you qualify for that, they look for service projects. So um, there are a lot of large, and if you know anything about Gates Millennium, they pay for everything after your unmet needs. So after you've done your FAFSA and they say, okay, um, you're eligible for this kind of a package. They'll, your school will take all that, and then Gates will come in and pay the remaining balance, I think, up until your master's degree. So you can basically go um, through high school and through college with no debt because you just gave 250 hours as a high school student. So um, I know a lot of students look to work, um, but working actually messes up your FAFSA. Um, I have to tell families that, you know, if you make all this money, Okay, they're going to think that you should have saved some money. I mean, because the FAFSA doesn't know that you had to pay bills and you had, you had to do all this. They don't understand that. They just say that, hey, you made all this money. I hope you saved some of it because now you owe um, some of that towards your college education. So just kind of be mindful um, when you're looking for 
those jobs and you you know of course we would love for you to to work and to help out but sometimes that can be uh can take us to your financial aid eligibility now talents students have they in the band they um they sing they have um varying talents those talents can transform into scholarship dollars um i was actually talking to a, a family on yesterday we had an event and the mom was like, well, yeah, he doesn't want to be in a band when he goes to college. Now, he's a current drum major. So, you know, being a drum major is a, a different experience. But you've been in a band since middle school, and now you can actually get paid to sit in that chair, to march up and down the field, to help pay for your college, and now you don't want to do it. So, um, and I don't know why he doesn't want to do it, and I'll probably do a little further investigation. But families, if you have those talents, those talents can turn into dollars. For your student and that will help them go to school um, I can speak from a personal experience when I was in college um, I was in a band and that three thousand dollars at that private institution was major goal because I did something I love to do anyway and they were now paying me to do it so um, and I had an activity and I was you know I was immersed and I was engaged in students when you go to school it's important that you are engaging yourself and participating in activities because research shows if you are participating and you are a part of the fabric, you will graduate. If you just go home and go to school and do nothing else, that kind of drains you and you're working all this time, and your grades drop, you're not socializing, you're not having a you know, true college experience. So if you can, because I know everybody's experience is different, but if you can have that opportunity to live on campus and to join activities, um, like I said, the research is not me. The research shows that those students tend to um, graduate on time and are successful through the college continuum. Any questions thus far for me? Nope. I, I have one question. Um, this okay. is Gus again. Um, uh, first question will be, um, you said that they've been experiencing delays with the FAFSA forms. So well, taking that into account, how soon can a student start filling out FAFSA, um, and, you know, for instance, if they haven't graduated yet from high school? If they have not graduated yet and they are in their senior year, October 1 of their senior year is the earliest. Okay. Mm-hmm. Any other questions uh, from those out there? I see some folks on the chat window. Okay. So scholarship search areas, um, like I said earlier, uh, there should never be a reason um, unless you want to, you know, there are these big, huge um, foundations for scholarships. They, you know, they do have a fee for it, but I always encourage um, students as early as ninth grade to go ahead and just get a fast web account. Um, that's a free search engine um, that has a multitude of scholarship opportunities and you're probably asking why as a freshman. Okay, because those scholarships will be the same when they become a senior. So as a freshman, they already know the criteria that's needed for those particular scholarships. So if you have four years to meet those uh, requirements, who's gonna get the scholarship? Right. So, um, I, like I tell my students a lot, you know, it's a lot of things we give you early because if you have the foundation, you can always draw back on it. So, um, I encourage families, if you have not created a fast web account, um, it's been your best fit and best interest um, to do so. Now, uh, My Scholar is um, another uh, search engine. I think there's a small fee for that, um, but once again, you know, there's a, um, it's worth its weight in gold. I mean, I think it's a one-time fee. I don't know if it's a monthly fee or not, but you can just use it as often as you need. You can turn it on, turn it off. You know, it's not anything that you have to subscribe to um, a lot. So, if they, you know, if you're comfortable with paying that fee, I think sometimes with um, college accounts, uh, they kind of waive that. So, um, if you have a older sibling that has an EDU account, um, I think they may have something where they are either reduced rate or no fee at all. So um, you might want to look into that. If you have an older student that's um, already in school, go ahead, read the fine print, and see if you can have them register and um, 
students can uh, utilize that. And now, we, we have another question from the chat yeah. window. Um, okay. Uh, the question says, uh, does FAFSA consider um, how many other household members are currently in college, if there's a parent or other siblings? They do. Um, so I always tell students, you know, when I'm assisting them with that, you know, um, did your other sibling think about going to college? Because, you know, they might be older or younger. Um, or did your parents ever think about going to college? So it's something in the formula. I don't know how that works, but it's something in the formula that says, okay, this household has two students enrolled, so um, it may be they may need more aid um, for school. So yes, they do take that in consideration. Um, accepted institutions. Once students have gotten accepted to schools, um, I also encourage them to go to that collegiate website and look on that financial aid page and see what institutional scholarships that are now made available. Because at this point, yes, they're not a student, uh, but they've been accepted. So uh, normally institutions send out um, a listing of eligible scholarships for that type of student. Um, so I always encourage students to look, go to if that's the school that they're really interested in going to, reach out to that financial aid department and see what monies are available. Um, I also share with students that uh, a lot of um, careers have pre-associations. Uh, so if you want to do engineering, um, and especially, you know, and I, I'm not going to, uh, you know, I know this is for all, but they have, uh, like, Blacks in Engineering. NSBE has a scholarship. They have Blacks in Criminal Justice. They have Blacks in um, Mass Media. So if you are a minority and you're interested in those, uh, career fields. There, there are scholarships available. I actually got um, National Association of Blacks and Criminal Justice when I was an undergrad. They gave me a check for seven hundred and fifty dollars for writing an essay. That's all I had to do. Um, seven hundred fifty dollars. You know, twenty years ago was a lot of money. Not a lot now, but still, you know, just writing an essay and oh, congratulations! I was able to put that on my resume because um, people understood what that was. So. Reaching out to those organizations and applying for those scholarships definitely as a college student, um, that adds value to your resume because that's something that you're interested in majoring in or you are majoring in it, and now the association um, endorses you uh, because they gave you a scholarship. So that all um, works out in the end. Now, that's all of the slide information I have. Um, but I'm available, you know, for any questions uh, that you all might have um, in the comments, uh, any concerns. Uh, it, it's important that, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a lot of anxiety with the transitional process for enrolling into college. Um, however, um, it's all about awareness. It's all about, you know, so when your schools have financial aid nights, uh, sometimes, you know, it's a, it's, you don't want to go or you got a lot going on, but you got to make sure you're in the audience because, there's a lot of opportunities out there, but as, and I want to can be frank, as African Americans, sometimes we kind of just let it go. We just say, oh, well, um, it'll be all right. I'll pray about it. Yeah, you pray and it's good. But you got to put some work in because the Bible speaks about that as well. You know, so you got to work if you want a return on your investment. You can't just put it all in, you know, in his hands and just say, okay, it'll, it'll just work out. No, you got to meet at those meetings. You got to ask questions. You got to push your child and say, hey, I know you say you don't want to play this instrument no more, but you want to go to the school and it's forty thousand dollars a year, and this these people are gonna give you seven to sit in this chair and play this instrument. You need to go play this instrument, put them in some lessons, and make sure they go in the band practice, make sure their grades are up, um, so they're eligible for uh, the aid. Um, we we have another question from the chat window. Um, okay. You, you have any information concerning children who uh, graduate early, and uh, does that play a role with them entering college? Yes. Um, dual enrollment is a very, very useful um, vehicle to finishing high school. Um, I, like I said earlier, I don't really support finishing early, um, because of the psychological aspect of students, you know, you, you're facing a student that is 16 years old in a, co in a college environment where the average age is 19. You know, there's a lot of things that go on in a college environment. Um, but if they're able to just take classes and still be in high school, still be in the activities, still have the support, still 
feel like they're, you know, 16 versus 26, um, I think, you know, that, that's better for their psyche. That's better for the parents' level of comfort. Um, you know, I have seen students that have lived on campus that are 17, um, but they don't really earmark them. You know, they're just treated as everyone else. So um, if the student is immature, that is not, very, not a very good idea. But, um, you know, I know some parents want to, you know, I don't need you to go ahead and move forward. But if they do uh, participate in the dual enrollment piece, I think that um, still helps them with their level of growing as far as becoming more mature. They still have the opportunity to take the rigor through the college class and to get the high school credit as well. Hey, and the student um, where uh, this particular student is already about to graduate, so it's probably a little too late, but are there any uh, scholarship opportunities for children who fall in that category that you know of? They have graduated early? Yeah, they compete with everything else. They can compete like anyone else because they're, they're going to college. So um, now unless they have an age clause on there, because, you know, most scholarships don't, I don't believe. It might be a, a maximum, but I don't think they have a minimum. If they, you know, if they, don't, if they meet the right criteria and the re uh, requirements, I don't see them not being eligible for it just because their age is not um, considered traditional high school, I mean, traditional college student, which is 18, 17, 18. All right, sir. I, I don't know if we have any more questions. Uh, I'll, I'll leave it up to the folks out there. Okay, is there a roadmap or checklist of what steps we need to take to be successful? Um, I can create something um, and, and send it to you and you can post it. Yeah, um, that would be great. Um, yeah. I can put it on our web page also. I can create a okay. separate uh, page and tab for that. And okay. that, that would be awesome if you're willing to help us with that. Okay. So if y'all can give me some time, because um, I'm, I'm working on a doctoral degree as well. So, um, okay. just, yeah, give me some time, and I can probably okay. have that uh, probably by Monday of next week. Yeah, take your time. Um, you know, okay. I know that, uh, you know, a doctoral degree, you know, it's pretty rigorous. So take your time, and, and any help you can provide, you've already been a huge help. And it's just awesome. Oh, no problem at all, no problem at all. I, you know, when you asked me to do this, I was like, you know, I've never done a webinar. You know, I've done presentations with, you know, when you have an audience, but um, I'm always willing to share um, information because, you know, the more people are empowered, um, the more they can help others and the more that we can all move forward, you know. So definitely if I can ever be of any assistance, um, you know, with sharing information, I don't, I don't mind at all. I don't. I'm actually about to do a financial aid uh, literacy workshop for my church, so I don't just keep all the information. Yeah, I do it as a as a career, but if I can help empower others, I'm definitely helping. Um, where Absolutely, that is awesome. And feel free to post anything you want to post on on our uh, social media pages. And if you want something on the web page, just let let us know because um, it's a huge help. And I'm I'm a firm believer that it takes a village. And we also have a couple of thank yous coming in from the, the chat window to you as well oh. from Ms. Denise Scott and a few other folks. So uh, this is uh, well received. And, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, press through uh, the rest of the presentation so we can close out the recording. Uh, basically, we're just telling folks now to just visit our site and we'll update uh, links and pass on the information. And we'll also post the video recording of this webinar onto the site within the next 48 hours. And, uh, you know, right now we just uh, want to press through the presentation. And we, we normally have a mentor or mentee of the quarter, but this time we just want to, um, you know, pay our respects to Dante Chisholm, uh, who was uh, shot on. November 3rd in Savannah and, and killed, you know, yeah. and him and his wife uh, were, were injured and, you know, they leave by, well, his wife is still in critical condition, and, but they leave behind four children. And, you know, he was an active member on our site and active in the community and mentoring children. So we just want to pay respect and let folks know that if they have information about um, this crime, they can reach out to Crime, crime Stoppers in Savannah at 912 Two, three, four, twenty, twenty. You know, and this is this is a tragedy when you have folks like him who are actually positive, who are actually present within the household. You know, to be taken out to senseless violence like this. And uh, you know, we pray for him and his family, and and we hope that you know his children will will come out okay. But we're also willing to help them if, if, as mentors if they're willing to reach out to us as well. And 
Lastly, to close out the presentation, I just want to bid a congratulation to two young ladies who, who've been active on our site, uh, Ms. Bria Bass, you know, who's uh, one of the ones we were speaking about, who's going to be a future registered nurse, and she was uh, accepted into college. And, you know, she does that. it comes with cost. That's why we're doing this thing. So we have a, a little link here to help her out with some of the fees if, if anyone wants to donate. And I'm definitely pledging something to her within the next few days. To, to help her out, but you can just go to the Cash App and, and just go to dollar sign future RN twenty twenty three to help her out. And also congratulations to, to my daughter Amaya who was accepted into Penn State to study architecture. And you know, and down at the bottom we have a link to the free FAFSA form here, and and that's uh you know that's that's a free version. There's also a paid version. And just go to that site and get started if you fall within the uh, time frame that, that's allocated that was put, up, put out here in this presentation. I see something coming in here in the chat window. Oh, yeah. And, Denise, um, is there a deadline? Is there a deadline for when you all want donations for, for Bria? Okay, it's, it's an ongoing uh, initiative, so just feel free to um, hit uh, Bria up on the Cash App and support in any way possible, and she's going to be uh, pu pushing forward to try to reach a goal of, of 4000 to help her get started and also applying for some of the aid that we talked about in this presentation. So that concludes our webinar, and we thank you again, Mr. Roberts, for taking the time to, uh, to share your, your wealth of knowledge with us. And we'll post it on the site, and you're welcome to come back and speak at, at any time that you want to. And we try to do these things quarterly, but everyone here is a volunteer. Everyone here has a career, so, you know, we, we sometimes exceed the quarter, but we try to continually come back and come together and just share knowledge. Uh, and before I shut it down, are there any questions, comments, or concerns for those, those on the, the call right now? Okay, I'll go ahead and stop the recording then.